But let's say, compare that to if I've had some caffeine, I have some fenibit in me, I got up early, I did my exercise, I haven't ejaculated in months, um, had my diet on point, have been having some nice Carezza style non-ejaculatory sex with a girl that I love. Then I'm out drinking it up with the boys at the bar, having a good time. You know, it's nine o'clock or whatever. Now I'm uh, now my state's beautiful. My state's perfect. Like my state's night night and day difference from you know had I been sitting inside doing computer work all day. Okay, so that state makes a massive difference. There there were days where I had no, like little to no fear doing cold calls, and there were days where I was like, you know, oh. I can't make this call. I can't call this guy today. I just, I cannot do it. You know, like told, and, and sometimes those would be in the same week because my state was, was lower that day. Okay. So don't think that, you know, just cause you had the progressive resistance and confidence and all these different things, you know, it's going to stay the same every single day. Now you're like, it's, it's a lot of it's dependent on how you're feeling, how your state is. So that's why I talk about state being so important to you guys, you know, keeping that state high, keeping the energy high, keeping that pimp hand strong, man, staying up, dude, you know, staying positive, not getting dragged down in negative news and media and, you know, all kinds of, you know, conspiracy theories and, and dude, just, just stay in your lane, stay in your zone, stay positive, stay, eat as healthy as you can, um, ejaculate as little as you can, diet as good as you can, major, major difference on your confidence level. Number three, fake it till you make it. Mick Jagger was a skinny, effeminate, upper middle class English lad playing black American blues music in pretty much drag. And rock stars didn't exist at that time. Rock stars didn't exist until he, convert, until he convinced the world that rock stars existed and that he was the biggest and best of all of them. Okay. He was faking it till he made it. He wasn't Mick Jagger back then. He was maybe then he was Michael Jagger. That was his real name. Michael Jagger became Mick Jagger. So that's a different ball game, dude. Like like no no one starts out as Mick Jagger. No one starts out as Tom Cruise. No one starts out as whoever the guy is, right? They fake it till they make it. Right? You start acting the part before you are the part. Okay, just like a, a method actor, you know, the method actor is going to get into character first. He's not just going to show up to a movie and, and be like, okay, I didn't train for this. I'm just going to try and act. No, he's going to study. He's going to become that character before, you know, practice, fake it till he makes it. And then it becomes second language. Like at some point, probably all the mannerisms I have now and the way I speak and, and the way I dress was all things that I learned, but they just become unconscious and they become unconscious with 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 a lot of people um, who, who who developed uh, confidence, okay. So fake it till you make it. Super important. Every confident guy was an awkward thirteen year old boy. I'll tell you that with your voice cracking and uh, the middle school dance where the boys are on one side and the girls are on the other side, and, and you're scared to death to go across that room to go dance with the girl and hold her by the elbows, and like <laughs> like 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 every guy was was that scared. I was, um, I sure was. And, uh, you know, you fake it till you make it and, and then you get that confidence and it's yours and you own it and, and no one can take it from you. Number four, uh, confide in yourself. We talked a bit about this in the definition of confidence, but I want to, I want to tell you like the actual words, the, at least the words that I use are like, I got this, I can do this. Like, I'm not going to quit. I can't be stopped. And I believe all those things. Okay. I believe that. Like literally confiding in yourself, being your own counsel, turning to yourself. Um, and when those insecurities come up, the fear or the uncertainty or whatever, you just don't listen to that. You just don't. You don't identify with those thoughts. You identify with the strong, confident thoughts. Both thoughts will come to you, you especially if you're stretching. The more you stretch, the more those negative demons will attack. But you just identify with the good ones as much as you possibly can. As much as you can. That's what confidence is. You know, It's identifying with surety, with certainty, with knowing what you're doing. Um, there's, a, there's a saying that, that I, I can be wrong, but I'm never in doubt. And I really like that because I am, I probably make a mistake every day, but I'm, you know, when I'm committed to it, I'm certain of it until something else changes um, the trajectory. And, uh, you know, you need to move through life with that certainty, dude. And, and, and you need to be able to project that to other people if you want them to buy into you. 
and, and for you to be successful. They need to buy into your certainty. Like when I, when I'm reading an article, dude, you know what I hate the most? I want to, I'm like, you know, what's the best camera for blog, vlogging or something like that? There'll be like a guy will review like four cameras and it'll be like, these each have their pros and cons. These ones are good for that. So you can choose what you want. I'm like, dude, I don't want to choose. I want you as the authority to tell me the best one and why it's better than everything else. And I want you to do it with total certainty. Okay. I hate that wishy-washy stuff. Everyone hates that. All right. People want an authority. They want a guy who knows what he's doing. If you're selling a product, you know, like this is the house for you. Here's why they have some objections. You're like, no, these are the reasons and you're certain, right? Not like, oh, I don't know, you can choose what you want, okay? That's not gonna attract people, that's not gonna close deals, that's not gonna inspire confidence in others, it's gonna inspire unconfidence. When your confidence can inspire other people to be confident, it's gonna inspire them to be certain, all right? So confide in yourself and, you know, if you need to lead, if you're a younger guy, you need to lean on my confidence right now, lean on my confidence, dude. That's what I'm here for. Until, you, until you're able to become your own father, um, you know, if, if all of us had good fathers who are happy, healthy, and wealthy, if all of us had Richard Branson as a father, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have a business here. I wouldn't have a business here if all you guys had a father telling you the right thing. Okay. So you have to become your own father. You have to be able to lean on yourself, confide in yourself, do that self-talk, tell yourself you can do it, buy into yourself and, and choose to identify with those confident thoughts. So important. Okay. Number five, two more points to go. Number five is win, all right? This is the one the therapist don't want you to hear. This is the one the therapist won't admit exists. They're like, you should be happy just to be productive and doing your job. And if you can be 5% happier, that's good. It's not good, okay? Half of your self-esteem comes from competing. The other half comes from being a good person, right? People like you, you're a good person. That's half of it. The other half is your success. Okay, you're in shape. You're dressed well. Um, and that's competition. Success is, is defined by people who aren't succeeding. Being fit is defined by people who aren't in shape. Having money is defined by people who are poor. Um, there's, there's no way out of that one. It's an ugly truth, but half of your self-esteem is based on competition. It's based on winning, okay? Um, there's, there's only so much... You know, I'm like real world, not fakeable external metrics, like hard metrics, hard data. Okay. Like you have X amount of money, you're in shape, you can get girls, you this, that, and the other thing. Or, you know, just, just even if you're starting smaller, smaller wins. Okay. Um, and all the quote unquote inner game in the world is not going to solve that. Is not going to solve not having wins. Okay. You might not have wins yet, but if you're working towards them, that's good. Like, you know, that it's, you know that it's a real thing, okay? Because I remember I used to read, like, guys were talking about, uh, you know, using NLP to pick up girls, and it would be like, project yourself as 10 feet tall, and, like, that stuff, you, you can't trick your brain to that extent. There's a lot of inner work you can do and preparing yourself and getting your mind right. I mean, I, I teach a ton of that, but you also have to get, like, external stuff in the world coming in, right? You can't dress like a slob and... and um, you know, try and project this era of confidence and winning. Or if you, if you do, it's going to hurt you. Okay. It's going to hurt you. I mean, you, you, one of the best ways to get, to get more confident is to win period. Okay. The most confident, like look at Conor McGregor, like super confident guy. Cause he keeps winning, man. He's had a few losses in there, but, um, you know, he, he brag about what he's going to do. And then he actually went and did it. So like you do that two or three times, you're going to be very confident, right? Almost to the point where you're getting to um, that hubris, you know, where too confident, where cockiness comes before a fall, but that's a topic for a different article. 